welcome to all of you that are listening today, and we pray that you're learning about the Great Tribulation. And this is the end time, and we need to know that. And that's the reason I'm giving you these Bible verses to learn that they are in the Word of God, and we need them to know what to do and what to say and be ready before he comes. And this is the signs of the end time. This is a blessing for people to know that are abundant. These are the last days. And as we talk about this, we have everything in him. All the Bible verses that we need, we are giving them out so you can study them and learn. Uh, there are 50 different, 50 different days in that day for all of us. In that day, that's when this is, all of that is happening. And this is what you need to know. And when you know that, during the tribulation period, believers of the church age, now you need to know this, will be enjoying comfort, peace, and joy in heaven. We go to heaven in Revelation chapter 4. And this is one of the Bible verses that you need to know and learn and remember it. Isaiah 65, verse 17. Isaiah 65, verse 17. And behold, I create new heaven and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. This is the greatest blessing in the world for all of us to know that this is His gift to all of us, and we're ready to go. And this is what I want everybody to know. And while we're here, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6. How you, this is, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as in this most, everybody needs to be ready for this time from the Almighty. This is what God is doing. This is in this book for us to learn. And then in verse 9, Isaiah 13, verse 9, and they shall be afraid. This is why people need to know Christ, so you don't have to have fear. You're already ready to be, to be taken into heaven. And this is what the whole world needs. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. This is something that people don't even think about. Cruel, both saith, this is what we need the wrath and fierceness, anger, to lay the land decline, and he shall de destroy the sinners thereof out of it. You see, you have to be ready, so you don't have to stay in this time during the tribulation period. And when you know that, your life changes. And he says in Zephaniah, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near. And has hatest greatly even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. And this is something that we don't have to live like this because he's got everything ready for us. In Revelation 14, this is all the blessings that he has for us. And you have to know them so you will not have fear. You can't have fear and please the Lord. Revelation chapter 14, it's all right here for everybody to know what he has for us waiting. And we can know that he does the very best in everything he does. Revelation 14, 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach.
preach unto them that dwell on the earth and them that is to every nation and t kindred and tongues and people. And now this is something you have to understand. You have to have two Bible verses with this. Mark 16, 15, go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is what verse 7 says in chapter Revelation 14, verse 9. And this is 6 and 7, saying, With a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And in verse 8, he says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. And this is why we have to know these words to understand that we are to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And this is why you give tracts out. And this is why I'm still giving out the word of God. Let's pray. O oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for this wonderful truth that Thou hast given to us. And we're rejoicing today that Thy Word says, Go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've set before Thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Herein is my Father glorified that You bear much fruit. You're to pray for one hundredfold. And He also says, Every word that we have given out, this is going to receive the gift of eternal life when we pray and believe. And the saddest thing is, suffer the little children and forgive them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And I want every person today to receive the gift of eternal life. And you will never have to think about all of the time of the seven-year tribulation period that if you don't worship the beast, they kill you. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. I'm praying for a hundredfold to go to heaven. This is what God has given to us, to go to heaven. He gave the place of hell for the evil satanic powers and all the people that refused to receive the gift of eternal life that he has given to us. And what he did to suffer for this, for all the people that are living, the de deepest love that he loved every person the same. And he died on that cross that we could all receive the gift and love one another as he has loved us. And we are praying for this in these last days. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So today as we come to these lessons, this is the everlasting gospel. That's what we see in here. And we know that is so important. And this is... 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We have to read the Word of God and know the difference in what is happening today and going to happen after we are raptured to be with the Lord. We will not be here during this time. And worshiping the beast. Now the first thing you have to learn, Satan controls men, the trinity of evil, dragon, the beast, and the false prophets, Satan's imitation of divine trinity. This is something that we have to understand and know how bad it is. And 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7, this is amazing what he has given to us to learn and to know. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then hell, then shall that wicked be, this is amazing, revealed 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now listen at what he says. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan and all power and signs and lying wonders. These are the tree, these are the beasts that are going to be there. And if you don't worship them, that's when they kill you. And this is why these, le- these words are here. And with all deceitfulness, unrighteousness in them that perish because they refuse the not to live the truth that they must be saved. You see, this is why my heart is aching because I want everybody that is listening today to receive the gift of eternal life. And then we see what it is in 1 John 2.18. Now the Antichrist is only in 1 John. The Antichrist is only in 1 John. And he says in 1 John, this is the blessings that you have to know and learn. And you have to write them down and you have to study them. You can't just listen to them because they are that important. 1 John 2 verse 18. Now listen what the Word of God says. And we cannot understand why people don't already turn to Him. Why are they waiting? And you can't have, you can't have time to wait. You have to do this. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Now listen, even now are there many Antichrists whose name we have that it is the last time. This is something that you have to understand and know and live it because you have to be ready. And then in chapter verse 2, chapter verse chapter 1, verse two, chapter 2 in the book of 1 John and 22. What is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, the Antichrist. This is amazing. And this is a time for the people to turn to God. That's what I say. And this is what the Word of God is giving us. And then chapter 4, verse 3. And all of these are here. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, but this is that spirit of Antichrist where, whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. You see, this is breaking my heart more than I've ever had in my whole life. And the beast is out of the sea now. This is what we saw. And Satan's imitations of his divine trinity. And Revelation 16, you see, when you hear this and know how bad it is and how they hate the people that are born again, that's when they kill them and then God takes them to heaven if they don't worship the beast. This is the greatest gift in the world for the people, but you don't have to go through that to have the gift of eternal life, and it has to be right now. Revelation 16, now you have to understand that all of this is the Word of God, and His Word cannot fail. This is Revelation 16, 13, and 14. And I saw, this is, listen at this, there unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirit of devils. You see, it's already happening. 
And you can't wait. You need to get the Word of God and go to John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and read the book of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and 1st and 2nd Peter. If you don't know the Word of God, those are where you begin, and then you learn. Work in miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them in the breath. This is amazing what they do. Battle of the great day of God Almighty. You see, you have to know the Word of God and you have to obey it before you can give this to people that never has heard. And then we see in Revelation 13, 4, I'm right here at Revelation 13, listen at this, and they worshiped the dragon with great power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? And then verse 12, chapter 13, verse 12, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before the him and causes the earth and them, which the devil therein is worshiped the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. You see, you cannot know anything about the word of God when you are obeying Satan. That's what he wants from you, and he has nothing to offer you. And then in verse 15, Revelation 13, 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that of many of would not worship the beast, that they should be killed. Now this is something that has really broke my heart and at 86 to think that people will listen to the satanic powers rather than someone that loves you. And this book is the only book on this earth that is eternal and that is divine love. And if you hate somebody, you're a murderer. The Bible plainly says that. We are to love one another as he has loved us. And we're going to see that right now, to think of what he has done for us. And we have to give this to him. Everything he has done in this book is our living word that we use every day. And it's all from us, for us. And he has given this to us, and people don't understand. This is what he did so we could have eternal life, and he loved us all the same. There is no difference. And here he is on the cross, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So here he is. He had this crown on his top of his head. It don't show it in this one. And then you think about what he did. He was beaten with this leather thong with 12 pieces of leather out. And each, each one had a, either wood or stone. And he was beaten 39 stripes, stripes on there. And he was dying. From our Heavenly Father gave his son, this was his son, and now he willingly went to the cross to die for us. And here was the nail prints in his hands and in his feet. And here we see all of these. When he was finished on that cross, he came down from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you see, this is how we can understand how much he loves us with his hands and the death and life. He said, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life 
and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And this is another Bible verse that you need. It is the most powerful one, and everybody can understand how great he was when he went to the cross to die. And remember, the whole world is his. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever, this is the most amazing thing for every person in the world. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You see what happens is our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord at the end time when we go in Revelation chapter 4, our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. And then our body goes back to dust. But then, after we have been in, on the earth, when, they come, when he comes to take us to heaven to be with him, here we are. We come out of there, but it is a new body. We get a new body to take us into heaven. And this is what we have in him. And everything that he has done, greater is he that's in you. He's in us, teaching us. The holy temple is in us. Satan, then, he that is in the world. You see, Satan's in the world, and we don't want that, because that we have to have the Spirit of God dwelling in us so we can be in heaven. You see, we don't have the Spirit of God until we receive Christ as Savior. And this is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. And now here he, he comes to take us into heaven. And we have a new body that never hurts, no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What else could anyone want? from people that are not saved. Now, I pray for a hundredfold every day, and they're in darkness, and they can't know anything until they're born again, and then they can have the Spirit of God to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. This is what we have in him and every person in the world. Now, you can get on your knees right now and ask God to forgive you and to, that you want to receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. We become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And this is why I'm here for you because every person in the world, it could happen at any time. There, there's no person knows it in the Word of God. Nobody knows what day it's going to be, but you can be prepared and be ready and go before this comes. Ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. Now, we have everything with Him, and here He is, we raptured to be with the Lord right here, our bodies. We get a new body, and we go to heaven. And that heaven is a place of perfect light. And here we are. He says he will give us a reward if we serve him. Just give him, a, a people, a blessing to give the tracks out to them. Just tell them how much God loves them, and you want to love them, and you want them to be there with us. So here they are, and he says, we're going, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. And when they're in heaven, they give their gift back to him because of all that he has done for us. And you know something? He has mansions in heaven. And they are pure 
gold. And you see what happens to those that have to go to an eternal hell. They will never know anything, but this is, everybody needs to know it because it's right here in this book. This is an blessed, this is, this is such a blessing that we can never understand the fourfold, hallelujah, the word of God. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as a voice of many waters, and as a voice of mighty thunder, and saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. You see, he's going to be reigning, and we're going to be living in that place. And I've already told him in my prayers, I want to serve thee in heaven. And he says, this is... In 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. There shall be no more death, no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are gone away. And you see, that's why I'm here. I have served him now for over 40 years, almost 50 now. And it has been the greatest life in the world. I'm 86 now, and I will say that again and again, and I'm ready for heaven. And this is what I want you to be there, because I hath not seen nor ear heard the, all of the blessings he has for us. And as I started to read in John and Peter, and I'll start on that, and then if, I, if he finishes before I get done. But look what he says in 2 Peter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus the Lord. This is the most amazing thing. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things that pertain. Every promise in this book is ours. And when you get through listening to this lesson, you get down and read the word of God and obey him. And look what he says, whereby are given unto you exceeding great and precious promises that these you might be. This is everything is for us of the, his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is the beginning of your b truth. And then in s chapter 2, I'm giving you these so that you can read them and read them and read them. And then he says in chapter 1 John, chapter 5, and this is the confidence. Now listen at this. Every word is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we required of him. I have lived these promises. Every promise is his, and I want you to know there's nothing like it in this world. Thanks for hearing today, and I pray that you will get in this book, and once you do, you will never be the same.